Ever wondered why I packed my bags and said adios to Los Angeles? Oh, the city of dreams where the sun always shines and the palm trees sway to the rhythm of Hollywood's heartbeat. I was drawn in just like everyone else by the glitz, the glamour and yes, even the promise of spotting a celebrity or two while picking up my morning coffee. Los Angeles you see is a city that never sleeps but rather, it works out. It's a place where your gym membership is more important than your social security number, and where your diet plan is the hottest topic at dinner parties. And then there was the traffic. Oh the traffic. The only place where you can finish an entire audiobook while inching forward on the freeway. Yes I fell for it all, the allure, the lifestyle, the chaos. And just like that the city of angels had me ensnared in its glitzy trap. But wait the story's just getting started. Behind the sunny facade, Louisiana had a different tale to tell. Imagine being a part of a never-ending car parade except it's not fun, and you're not throwing candy, you're just stuck in traffic. More often than not, my car knew the inside of a garage more than the open road. Ah, the joy of LA's road congestion. And let's not forget about the cost of living. Picture this. You're paying the price of a posh penthouse for what feels like a broom closet. A gold-plated broom closet, but a broom closet nonetheless. Then there's the elusive quest for a good parking spot. Consider it the urban equivalent of hunting for a unicorn. You're more likely to spot a celebrity at the local supermarket than find a free parking space at peak hours. So, you see, beneath the layers of glitz and glamour, Louisiana was an intricate dance of patience and compromise. Remember when I said LA had me ensnared? Well, it was more like a chokehold. So, when did the city of angels turn into the city of anguish for me? Well, it all came to a head on one sunny, smoggy afternoon. There I was, stuck in another gridlock on the 405, counting the number of palm trees along the median to pass the time, and then, of all things, my stomach growled. It demanded sustenance. So I pulled off at the next exit, my sights set on a cafe known for their avocado toast. A simple delight, right? The price tag however was anything but delightful. $10 for a slice of bread and a mashed up fruit? It was highway robbery. I mean, I love a good avocado as much as the next guy but this, this was the pit of absurdity. That was the moment folks. The moment when I realized that the glitz and glamour of LA had been replaced by $10 toasts and never-ending traffic. And that, my friends, was the moment I decided to trade my sunglasses for a pair of snow goggles. So, how did I bid farewell to the city that had been my home? Well, it was the most LA goodbye you could imagine. I spent my last few days soaking up as much sunshine as I could and I swear I tried to pack a suitcase full of it. Turns out, sunshine doesn't really fit in a Samsonite, who knew? On my final day, I decided to truly immerse myself in the Los Angeles experience one last time. And what's more LA than a good old traffic jam? So I hopped in my car and spent a couple of hours in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the 405. It was like a farewell party thrown by the city itself, complete with honking horns and the sweet symphony of road rage. And with that, I left my LA life behind. But hey, at least I got a few good stories out of it, didn't I?